What's good guys, Siobhan here back with a new video and finally I have the iPhone 10 review. So I know I've been doing a lot of no 8 videos, I've been doing a lot of iPhone 8 plus videos. But finally I have the iPhone 10 review under the belt. Now I've been using it for over 2 weeks now and I think I've known the phone enough to give it a detailed review. So this is my experience with the iPhone 10 and what you should know before buying. Let's get started. We all know any Apple launch is an exciting one, but the hype around the brand new iPhone 10 or X has been massive. The device, which Apple touts as the future of smartphones, has completely got a design refresh from the previous iPhone models, most noticeably a larger screen with an absent home button, but nothing more than that, and we also have that notch. It also has the futuristic features like the face ID and animojis and it's the most expensive iPhone yet starting at $1,319 here in Canada which is crazy. Since the announcement of the iPhone 10 in September people have anxiously been waiting for consumer reviews, tech reviews, tech bloggers, journalists and everything of the sort just to see if the iPhone is worthy of all the hype and with the release being passed everything has been slightly dying out as some people have already made their minds up. I was one of the first group of people to get the new phone on the launch date so I've been using it for roughly two weeks now and this is everything you guys need to know about this new device. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to talk about is no home button. So the no home button, you guys have to learn all these new gestures and basically it's it's been a rough learning curve, but I've gotten used to it. Being without the home button isn't bad at all. It just takes a bit of time to get used to as does relearning the following. So waking up the phone is different if your lift to wake setting is disabled, you'll have to tap on your screen or your power button to wake the phone up. Getting to the home screen is also very different. If you have an app open and want to get to the home screen, you simply swipe up from the bottom. And also the control center accessing the control center has been really different now and kind of inconvenient. So since you're now accessing the home button by swiping up from the bottom, you now have to swipe down from the top right corner to access the control center, which is just really, really annoying. Accessing the notifications is different as well. This remains the same as before, swiping down from the top. Just avoid the top right hand corner because that's where the control center lives. So you either swipe on the top left of the screen or you can just swipe in the middle but not on the right side of the screen. Force quitting apps can also be a challenge. To force quit an app, you have to swipe up from the bottom while holding your finger at the center of the screen for a small second or so until you see all the apps appear. Then you'd have to hold down the apps again, then swipe out the app that is giving issues. That's kind of a, like, it's kind of a task to carry out. Screenshotting has been changed, but to me it's for the best, but it also has a few drawbacks as well. To take a screenshot, you'll have to press the volume up button and the power button at the same time. Yes, this way is easier than trying to curve your hand in such a way to take a screenshot, especially if you have a plus model but it also makes for a lot of accidental screenshots. In my first hour of using the phone, I took about five screenshots of my home screen just by trying to pick up my phone or just by putting in a case and removing a case. There's a lot of screenshots in my camera roll. Thank God I could just delete them with the tap and drag feature. I just dropped them off into my recycle bin and then clear that out as soon as possible. Also, turning off the phone is different as well. You no longer just use the power button to turn off the phone. You'll need to press both the power button and the volume down button until the side to power off feature shows up. Don't continue to hold it down. However, it's gonna call the emergency SOS thing and it just scared the f out of you. In order to force reset, it's different as well. What you need to do is just hold the volume up button, the volume down button, not really hold it, just tap it. Tap the volume up, tap the volume down, and then you need to hold the side button until the Apple logo comes up. When you see the Apple logo comes up, you could let go of the button and it will force restart your phone if you ran into any glitches or anything of the sort. So yeah, it's like first grade all over again, but once you get used to all the features, it starts to feel natural. And I've even found myself swiping up on my Note 8 trying to get home, and that's not really a good thing. Secondly, you have to know about the face recognition. My experience has been 
slightly good but also negatively and yeah let me just tell you about the face recognition experience unlocking my phone is way easier with face id but the first few times i was slightly alarmed that it just opened without me putting in my passcode it was really crazy i tried it with and without glasses i tried it with my fur hoodie and an oversized scarf because yes winter is coming shout out to canada hold tight snowman another bonus face id has is the way that it works with different applications on the phone you have face id for autofilling passwords for example if you're on amazon you need to log in boom face id apple pay you need to purchase and order face id it's just really seamless and fun another awesome feature that face id has is the notification feature so for example if you have a notification on your phone and you're not looking at the phone on the lock screen it will show this generic message that says iMessage or for example you got an Instagram message it would say Instagram notification but if you glance and look at the phone with your face it will show the entire message and it will show hey from such and such or such and such has liked your photo but if you're not looking at it now you put your phone back down it hides all those contents another awesome feature that face id has is with the alarms so for example your alarm goes off in the morning and you look at it it will lower the volume of the alarm it won't turn it off but it will lower it it's like hey i see you calm down everything's good but if you don't look at it it starts to get loud again and you just need to turn off your alarm you lazy bitch But of course, if you're not a fan of the new feature, you can change it back to what you're used to by going into settings, notifications, show previews, and there switch it off from when unlock to always. So yeah, that's pretty cool. In terms of setting up face ID, it's super easy. A circle will appear around your face and you just awkwardly move your head in a circular motion until the green lines fill out. And when that's done, you're good to go. It's also a very good neck exercise. I found a few bones cricking and cracking, but yeah, it was a good experience. Thirdly, we're gonna talk about the screen. It's really, it's really a beautiful screen, but the notch tends to get in the way sometimes. I first noticed it when I was adjusting the volume while watching Instagram stories, and I realized that I couldn't actually see the whole volume bar at the top because the notch is in the way. It has gotten in the way of landscape videos, however, Meaning I will happily catch up on Stranger Things 2 because I'm still on season 1 I need to catch up on this and as I said before the notch isn't that bad in portrait mode If you're using your phone in portrait mode, you can't really see the notch. It's not really there But once you turn your phone into landscape mode, you're watching videos, you're viewing content, consuming media It definitely gets in the way, but you can also get used to it over time. So it's basically a personal thing I would, I would advise you guys to go ahead and try it out for yourself before buying the phone because some people have OCD and can't really work with that notch thing. Of course you could squeeze your phone in, shrink it and hide the notch but then again it will be basically paying for an iPhone 7 without a home button. The fourth thing I want to talk about guys is animojis. Now animojis are fun but they're not really necessary. So I'm not gonna lie, when I first saw animojis in action during Apple's unveiling of the iPhone 10. I thought it was really funny and cool. I was really looking forward to using it. Once I tried it out for myself, it was pretty entertaining and fun. However, I don't find them to be absolutely necessary and I don't think they work well in the dark as expected. So all those late nights, Animoji, you can't really do that. You have to turn on your light at 2 a.m. just to send an Animoji, which defeats the purpose. Who, I mean, it's there, you could use it, but to me, it's not like a unique selling point of the iPhone 10 and it really gets old over time. I've seen all the Animoji karaoke's, those are pretty cool, but apart from that, it's just there. If you want to use it, you can, but it's not something that you should really depend on for buying the iPhone 10. Now, let's talk about the camera. I wasn't 
as excited for the back camera I was as I was excited for the front camera because I wanted to test out portrait mode selfie now this was one of the features that really led me to buy the phone because iPhone 8 plus doesn't have the portrait mode selfie feature so I thought that this would be a great great feature but I tried it out it's not as perfect as it was in the ads and everything that Apple um, did so I was kind of let down with the portrait mode selfie and also animojis it's fun and all but after using it for a couple while and then you realize that not all your friends has an emoji because not everyone's gonna buy an iPhone 10 just like that it kind of died out so the animoji phase is dead um, the overall camera though when you turn it around to the back we have an awesome 12 megapixel camera at the back right here it takes amazing photos and I can definitely see a difference between the iPhone 10 and the iPhone 8 plus it's sharper it's more vibrant than the other cameras that we see on the smartphone market right now and it has a really really good shallow depth of field which is amazing you can see stuff in the background more more details and it's an overall great camera for the battery life it's not that good so far um it finishes around six hours for me five hours which is not bad but under heavy usage i can only get three hours of battery life i'm talking about using this for the entire day watching videos youtube facetime calling texting i need to recharge in the, like four three hours which is all right but not really good no the verdict so should you buy this phone that's the big question. Is the iPhone X worth $1,319? Well, it depends. If you're really into having the latest gadget and can afford it, then the answer is a no-brainer to me. It'll definitely be yes. It's undoubtedly a beautiful phone and it has obviously high price range, but many new smartphones upwards of $1,000 right now. And for example, the Google Pixel XL, 32 gigs runs $1,049. The Samsung Galaxy S8 64 gigs runs $1,035. Plus, Apple has a pretty great trading program which can help you with the cost if you want to. However, if you're a bit strapped for the cash, you may want to stick to the iPhone 8, which is $929 for a 64 gig model. And if you're looking for an upgrade from your current smartphone, personally, I really like this phone, though I wish we still had some form of touch. ID. However, the screen and camera are what really sell me for this phone and that's one of the main reasons why I decided to go for it. And also the, f the factor of having the newest phone, that's me, I like to have the newest phones. But if you're not that type of person and you're not an Apple fan, I think you could wait for the iPhone X Plus or 10 Plus which would be coming out next year, which would be the successor to the iPhone 10. Thanks for watching and always love, peace and tweaks. Signing up.